Uh, all your stuff. Man, this looks totally different than the last time oh, I saw yeah, it. No, you it, was, it was all the way through here. Yeah, it was a junker when you saw it, man. Hey guys, I'm here with Paul, what do you call it, Bread Trucker? Bread Trucker, yeah. Bread Trucker, he's been out on the road for a few years now. We met originally in Oregon, and his van looked different. I don't know if the inside looked different, we haven't had a look yet, but I want you to meet Paul and see what he's got going on and maybe hear some of his stories. He's got an interesting channel. If you like any of that audit, those audit videos where people get pulled over by the cops and stuff, he's got a few of those on there that I've seen that I think are pretty interesting and maybe we can get a little of your feedback on how to cut that down a little bit. For sure, I've done a lot of improvements to the truck that will get me pulled over less, so that's a good thing. Let's take a look at the side of it first of all. So one thing I did here is, uh, I, I, this was what the truck looked like when it was delivering bread. So they took all this stuff off. I just put it all back on. But, uh, yeah. And the reason behind that, can we go inside? Is that okay? Just yeah, get out of the way. Like, totally. We met in Primeville mm -hmm. a few years ago. Yep. At that point, how long have you been living the traveling lifestyle? Uh, that was my first year on the road. I probably had been in this for less than a year at that point. And when you saw it, it was completely under construction. There was like not much going on. It was pretty much a empty box truck. And uh, I had, a you know, just a little bed platform and like hardly anything set up. So Well, even the layout was completely different. Yeah, actually, yeah, since you saw it, I had built to that plan. I had a back door that was like a regular residential door on the back an office in the back corner and it was a complete walkthrough where you could come through the front door exit out the rear or whatever um and once i started traveling with my partner uh, i was single at the time when i went on the road now i have a partner and we just found out that the layout was not good for both of us it just didn't work so we ripped out 75 percent of the truck the only thing that stayed was this kitchen portion and uh, we ripped everything from that front wall all the way the whole back wall, everything came out. So completely switched everything around. Living on the road, where did you do the, all the construction? Uh, I did it at various places. Um, in um, a place in Oregon, right after I met with you, uh, there was a friend of mine that um, he let me stay in his backyard and um, helped him out in his house building some stuff. And uh, he allowed me to build all of this. That's where I built all the kitchen and uh, everything there. Okay. Let me do something real quick. I, <clears throat> sorry if you'll have to mm -hmm. like, cut it, but this is creating noise too. Oh, okay. Thanks. But, um, so a little bit here and there, just a little improvements as you go. It looks like a totally different rig on the inside and the outside. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's, I, I did it all on the road just when I could, you know, like if I, if I had, uh, you know, like the event like this, you know, I could get a project done. I would select what I wanted to do and work on that, you know, so did you live the traveling lifestyle to begin with? Um, I have always been unhappy with regular, normal life, but I, I lived in Orlando. I was there for like 37, 38 years. I worked in the hospitality industry, restaurant, being a cook, all, all aspects, you know, bat bartending, serving, and um, it, it just, it wasn't fulfilling, you know, it just felt like I was working for nothing. And uh, I always wanted to travel and uh, my last 10 years of working in retail and hospitality industry is uh, I, work, I was at Publix, I was a deli manager for Publix for uh, 10 years. And um, they, just, they just worked you too hard, you know? It was 60, 70 hours a week, and even at that you weren't doing enough. And uh, I was done with that kind of grind, and I wanted a free lifestyle where my time is very valuable to me and I you know I, I, I figured I'd be better off going out on my own and creating my own my own career you know just free of uh, some multi-billion corporation you know some people might be watching this and say but wait doesn't Publix give you a, a pension and certain considerations medical benefits you're ready to just pass on all that and come out and fly by the seat of your pants 
Yeah. What would you say to them? I, I, that would be my father. And uh, <laughs> what I would say to him <laughs> is, uh, you know, I, I know it doesn't seem like a, a logical thing to do because, you know, everybody tells me, I, the whole time I worked at Publix, everybody told me what a good company it was to work for. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, you know, you, people from the outside may say that. And I'm sure there's some people on the inside of the company who say that too, but it didn't feel good to me. Yeah, you know, it was... I, I don't know. I, I uh, it wasn't rewarding. I was locked down to this. I, I spent more time at work than I did at home, mm -hmm. and um, it wasn't rewarding for me at all. Luckily, I didn't ever uh, do the thing that a lot of people do. They start getting a manager's income. They start getting a new car with a huge car payment. They get a big house with a huge house payment, and I didn't do all those things. You know, I drove a '94 Geo Metro the whole time I was I was a manager, and. Uh, you know, I, I stayed, I kept all my bills low. I'm pretty much debt free. I got a little bit of school, you know, loans, but uh, very manageable uh, bills that I have to pay. So uh, this is what I always dreamed of doing. And, you know, I thought I would, I would just go for it. You, know? you like travel rather than finding a location, say some tropical destination where you could live there, you could live on the beach in some lagoon somewhere, mm -hmm. but it's not the same lifestyle as being on the road where you can choose your location. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly, um, one of my plans was I wanted to conquer the United States first and then check out Canada, the, you know, the places I can drive to. Mm -hmm. um, I do plan on uh, world travel as well, but I've never experienced that. So I don't know if I'd be happy on a island somewhere. I'm more of a mountain man. Right. Um, so beaches, islands, they don't really do that much for me. I, I think they're beautiful, but um, I like cold weather and mountains and uh, that kind of thing. So um, I might be happier in a place like Switzerland or Iceland or, you know, I don't know. Um, but I do intend to branch out and see the world. But for now, I'm just traveling in the van and we'll see where that leads you know traveling in the van traveling in fact in a step van what were there any special considerations that went into choosing a step van or did you just kind of get a good deal on it why a step van rather than a box truck or a schoolie or something like that it was uh it, it did kind of just fall in my lap in a way um the reason i bought this was because it has a cummins four-cylinder turbo diesel uh, this truck gets 14 miles to the gallon, which is pretty dang good for a truck of this size. And uh, I bought it to dismant dismantle the truck, rip the motor out, and to rebuild this old vintage 1976 uh, Dodge RV I have. Um, but once I started checking out the truck, it ran and drove, and I was like, why would I rip this thing apart? Um, just to build something else is very comparable. It was almost the same size. And um, another consideration was I started looking around on YouTube and man, there wasn't anything about step vans. The only person that was doing anything with step van was Seven, of course. Right. Um, he was the only person on YouTube that had any kind of content. And I was like, well, you know, I think this is a great platform. Everything is flat surfaces, 90 degree angles, super easy to build, extremely tough. It's all made out of aluminum. And, um, you know, I just decided this was going to be the platform for me. And it's working out great. Yeah, I love it. It's great. So what is the deal with you getting pulled over all the time? I don't get pulled over hardly at all. Is it because I'm not putting myself in the same situations in the cities that you are? I don't park my bus inside the cities at night or anything. But you've gotten pulled over when you're not just parked for the night. Tell it's, me about yeah. that. What's going on? Is it the step van? What, what's going on? I think that is, I, I think it's a lot that has to do with the vehicle. Um, you know, when they see a schoolie, they kind of know it's probably a hippie or whatever, you know, traveling guy or uh, they converted school buses aren't, you know, they're not too, uh, too much of a target. But um, I never get bothered when I'm parked because this blends in very well, you know, in cities and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's got a certain level of stealth and I know people argue the fact that maybe there's no such thing as stealth or whatever but certainly more stealthy than the school schoolie you know um, but the problem I have is crossing state lines that's when it always happens uh, especially if you're going from a, a prohibition state into a non-prohibition state and back like uh, you know with cannabis laws and all that um, I don't know, they, they look at my van, it used to have no markings on the outside of any kind, and they just thought I was up to something. I don't know if they thought I was, um, you know, a sex trafficker or 
uh, trafficking drugs or money or I just don't know but every single instance that I've been pulled over um, it was very clear that they intended to search my truck that was their that was their motivation you say every single instance are we talking like four or five times it's four times now if I uh, uh, really three full like legit videos that you'll see on my channel um, I was pulled over one other time that wasn't as big of a deal but every time they're, they're trying to search they're always looking to get inside this truck and see what I got in here are all of those uh, stops on video on your channel yeah and yeah. what's the name of your channel for those people that might want to go check them out? Uh, the name of my channel is my real name, Paul Barger. Um, but it, if you search Bread Trucker, you can find me everywhere as Bread Trucker. A new little thing I'm starting up now is I've only been on for a month and a half, but I just went viral on TikTok. You can find me on TikTok as Yeah, I wanted as to ask Bread you about Trucker. that. Somebody was <laughs> telling me about that. Yeah, I posted my first video and it just absolutely blew up. So, um, yeah, I'm doing TikTok. You can find me everywhere as Bread Trucker, even if you type it in. On YouTube, uh, my channel name is actually my real name, but okay. What yeah. uh, what advice would you give somebody watching this if they're going to encounter a stop by law enforcement? You've been through a few of them, and you've probably learned some things that you might tailor your visits a little bit different each time. What advice would you give to somebody that might get stopped by law enforcement? Well, if you look at my videos and you look at them in chronological order, you'll see a a very clear progression of my behavior. Um, my first two stops. I've done like I did my whole life. I answered all their questions. Every single thing I was, I obeyed, I cooperated in every way, except for allowing them entry into my truck. When they asked to search, I declined a search. Um, my first bit of advice for anybody that's gonna get pulled over is record every single time you interact with law enforcement, no matter what. Even if it's a positive interaction, you're being recorded by them, why wouldn't you record and, and you know in uh, have it on file for yourself absolutely it, it's just a level of protection and accountability and you don't know there's a lot of good cops out there and there's some bad ones so and there's nothing just, to say that they can't just reset the record button at every visit and everything you thought was recorded for sure. posterity isn't yeah they but could turn them it. off yeah yeah they turn them off or you know the, there's lots of things that happen you know i've seen videos evidence that cops plant drugs in people's rigs so um, that happens, you know, and I, th I'm, I'm not an auditor. I do have some auditing style content on my channel, but I just, I just, uh, I, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I just uh, document my life. That's all I do. So these pullovers, they happen in real time. I posted them on my channel. They're real things. You were already and, recording uh, anyway. Yeah, I'm going down the road with the GoPro going, and um, it takes a little bit of, um, a little bit of guts to take a camera and point it in a cop's face but I encourage everybody to do that if if you're being pulled over and they're questioning you your life and your liberty freedom is on the line right. absolutely every single time and uh, you know for some people it's a little bit more dangerous of a game than than I have as a as a white man um, some people don't have such an easy time and they, they don't get treated the same so I don't know. I, I think it's a little bit of my responsibility to show how things really are, you know. And um, so I don't know. That's that's my main bit of advice: is record in every single instance, and you don't have to answer a single question, you know. I my last uh, pullover that I was in, that's you'll see the progression where I'm not playing ball anymore. I'm not answering all these extraneous questions. Where you come from? Where are you going? What do you do for work? Uh, you know, where where's the truck going? And, you know, all these things. I, I'm not answering any of those questions. And as a matter of fact, the Supreme Court set a precedent um, that the cops can lie to you. Right. It's absolutely fact that the cops are allowed to lie to you, and it's illegal for you to lie to them. But in that same judgment, the Supreme Court also recommended that United States citizens do not talk to the cops. And that means you don't have to say a single word. You, don't, you can provide your documentation, that's it. All they need is license, registration, insurance, and you don't have to say a single, single word. You could maybe talk yourself out of tickets. I've done it my whole life. Right. But you're not required to say anything to them. So, I don't know. Well, circling back to living on the road, living in your in your van, uh, 
would you like to have any final advice that you would offer to anybody that might be watching this and they're thinking about living on the road, building a rig out themselves? What advice would you give them with your years of experience? I, my biggest bit of advice for that is don't wait till you're ready because you're going to say, oh, I'm going to go on the road in six months and two months down the road, you'll still be saying, I'm going to, I'll be hitting other, hitting the road in six months mm -hmm. and it turns into forever. You know, right. When I moved into this van, I had nothing built. Absolutely nothing. I had, I didn't even have cushions for a bed. I had a plywood plank that I slept on. Um, don't wait till you're ready. I mean, I know that's kind of scary information, but if you wait till you're 100% ready, maybe some people are good at that. You know, maybe that's just my personality type that I tend to procrastinate, things like that. But um, if if you're one of those people that puts things off or whatever, go before you're ready. You know, I, I uh, built this whole thing as I went on the road um, and just, you know, experienced life and all the cool places I could go without having much of a build going on. When you saw it, there was like hardly anything going on in here. But you were out there, right. you were doing it. You were yeah. growing, you were making your own kombucha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Absolutely. I had, I mean, I had a few things built, like my office in the back was built, but for the most part, it, it needed a lot of work still. But, uh, and I've never built anything like this in my life, ever. You know, I, I'm, I'm a pretty handy guy, but um, you don't have to know what you're doing to do it, you know? People always say, oh, I don't know how to do that. Well, do some research. Look up on YouTube. I mean, that's right. that's what I've used YouTube for my whole life, you know? Well, since it's been around, but, right. um, you know, you can learn. You can teach yourself. Also, a Craig jig works really good. A what? Craig jig. What's that? You ever you never used a Craig jig? Is it, I don't it's know the it pocket is. hole. Uh, Oh, it sets a hole at a 45, at an angle, then you yeah. put the screw in? I've put this whole truck together with the Craig jig. That's you can't cool. even see where it's at, but yeah. Very nice. Very good little tool thanks to, for the tip. Uh, to use. Yeah. And thanks. I know you were just running out that you guys wanted to go, but you still stopped and gave us some time. So I want you guys to meet Paul. And who knows if we'd have been able to catch back up with him you know, at a later date. So thanks a lot. I really appreciate Absolutely, it. It's good to see man. you again. For sure. We Thank haven't really you. stayed in touch you know, in between our visits. And here we are. Yeah. So that's cool. No doubt. I All appreciate right, man. it, man. Thanks. Tell me about TikTok. What did you uh, just log on? Is there any...